Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening, welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Yesh Chanza. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Monday, the 2nd of November. Stubble smoke adds 40 percent pollutants to Indian Capital's Air Seas Monitoring Agency. Pakistani court directs police to recover minor Christian girl abducted and converted to Islam. And Sri Lanka shut down's capital following surge in cases, curfew extended. And now for all the details. The air quality index in Indian capital New Delhi continued to remain in very poor category for the third consecutive day on Monday. Stubble burning has peaked in neighbouring states and its share in the pollution level in the city has risen to about 40%. The government's air quality monitoring agency has said. The pollution situation in Indian capital New Delhi is not showing any signs of improvement as the air quality index hovered above 300 in very poor category for the third consecutive day on Monday, with authorities saying contribution of stubble burning has been the maximum ever in Delhi air. The central government's air quality monitoring agency, Safar, has said the share of stubble burning in Delhi's pollution rose to 40% on Sunday, the maximum so far this season. NASA's satellite imagery also showed sudden increase in stubble burning cases since October 25 in Delhi's neighbouring Punjab and Haryana states. Apart from farm residue smoke, it gets difficult for the pollutants to disperse because of winter inversion and they remain closer to the ground. So the stubble burning's contribution yesterday has actually increased. So it's a, it's a, it's a dangerous sign. Of course, we see that, uh, that range fluctuating. And in the days coming when the temperature is actually dipping, as the temperature this morning was actually almost 10 to 12 degrees. So it's a, it's a very, very... Dust and smoke fill Delhi's air every winter, making breathing difficult for adults and children alike. Increasing pollution in the Indian capital is raising concerns among residents, especially when the city of more than 20 million is struggling in the face of coronavirus pandemic. India's COVID-19 caseload crossed the 8.23 million mark while the number of people who have recuperated from the disease surged to 7.5 million, pushing the national recovery rate to 91.68%. New Delhi cases in India have been falling since September, but experts warn that infections could rise again during the festival season. India recorded 45,231 new coronavirus infections, taking its total cases to 8.23 million, the health ministry said on Monday. The active COVID-19 cases in country standard 561,908. A total of 7,544,798 people have recuperated from COVID-19 so far, taking the national recovery rate to 91.68%, while the case fatality rate was recorded at 1.49%. New Delhi cases in India have been falling since September, but experts warn that infections could rise again during the festival season. People continue to flock to markets and popular visitor sites seeming to forget the social distancing guidelines after months of restrictions to counter the pandemic. Meanwhile, all higher education institutions, universities and affiliated colleges across the states of Andhra Pradesh, Assam and Uttarakhand reopened from Monday after being closed for months due to COVID-19 pandemic. In northeastern Assam, as per the directive, students of class 6 and above will be allowed to attend the school. However, Parents' consent will have to be submitted beforehand. Now from today, another three classes uh, are reopened, there are six, seven, eight. That is, uh, SOP is already prepared, uh, our government, education department, government of Assam, 
also uh, that is uh, uh, publishing SOP for us. We are following the guidelines of SOP by following the COVID, uh, COVID protocol. Indian Interior Ministries Unlock 5 guidelines have allowed the schools to reopen across the country after October 15 in a graded manner. However, the final decision is to be taken by the state governments and the union territories. Pakistan's Prime Minister Imran Khan has announced the granting of provisional provincial status to Gilgit Baltistan despite protest against the move in the illegally occupied region and strong opposition from India. Pakistan has announced the granting of provisional provincial status to illegally occupied territory of Gilgit Baltistan despite protests. Pakistan's Prime Minister Imran Khan made the announcement on Sunday during his visit to Gilgit Baltistan ahead of an election in the region to be held on November 15. Locals and political activists in Gilgit Baltistan have continued to express resentment against the arbitrary decision to alter the legal status and against holding elections in violation of UN resolutions. <laughs> Meanwhile, India's foreign ministry said New Delhi firmly rejects the attempt by Pakistan to bring material changes to a part of Indian territory under its illegal and forcible occupation. Soon after, Pakistan's foreign ministry also categorically rejected New Delhi's statement. The people in Gilgit, Baltistan have long accused Pakistan of systematically exploiting the region of its resources and blame any resistance meets brutal government reprisal. Activists have expressed concern that China has been lobbying Pakistan to bring occupied region under its legal jurisdiction to protect its investment which are part of the multi-billion China-Pakistan economic corridor. Moving on. The Sindh High Court in Pakistan on Monday ordered that Arzu Raja, a 13-year-old Christian girl who was allegedly abducted before being forcefully converted to Islam and married to a 44-year-old Muslim man, be recovered by police and shifted to a shelter home. Pakistan's Minister for Human Rights, Shireen Mazari, confirmed the development and said the next hearing has been fixed for Thursday. The alleged abduction of Arzu Raja on October 13 had sparked protests from human rights groups and pleas for justice from her parents against her purported forced conversion and underage marriage with the Muslim men. Activists have long raised concern over rising cases of abduction and forceful conversion of girls from minority communities in Pakistan. More on news from Pakistan. Pakistan has witnessed its highest annual inflation rate in eight years and it doesn't seem to be coming down during fiscal year 2020. People are upset with the rise in daily food prices and continue to express their frustration against Prime Minister Imran Khan's government. Inflation in Pakistan has broken all records in recent times and people are upset with the rise in daily food prices. The pace of inflation is skyrocketing at a time when the economic activity is slowing down, which has made it difficult for the people to cope with the situation. Prices of lentils have crossed 200 rupees per kilogram and the prices of flour and vegetables, including tomato, are also touching the sky. According to a local businessman in Karachi, Prime Minister Imran Khan should intervene immediately instead of targeting the opposition, otherwise ruling Pakistan Tehreek e Saaf government's failed policies will lead to its fall. कोई भी हुकूमत हो एक डेमोक्रेटिक माहौल में तो उसको पूरे पांच साल करने चाहिए लेकिन मुझे लगता है इस हुकूमत को किसी दूसरों से खतरा नहीं है इस हुकूमत को खुद से ही खतरा है मुझे लगता है ये अपना वजन वजन से ही गिर जाएंगे क्योंकि इनके पास कोई पॉलिसी नहीं है और इनके पास सिर्फ एक ही बस नारा है कि बस वो चोर है वो डाकू था जब आप अपोजिशन में थे यही नारा आप कह कर यहां आए जब आपको पब्लिक लाई है तो वो तो एक्सेप्ट कर चुकी है ना कि हां भाई वो चोर थे आप अच्छे हो अब आपको प्रूव करना है कि आप अच्छे हो लेकिन आपके पास पुराना ही नारा है और पब्लिक के लिए आपके पास कोई बात नहीं है द आईएमएफ हैज फोरकास्ट अ सबड्यूड इकोनॉमिक ग्रोथ रेट फॉर पाकिस्तान कपल्ड विद एन एलिवेटेड रेट ऑफ इन्फ्लेशन एंड राइजिंग अनएम्प्लॉयमेंट ड्यूरिंग द करंट फिस्कल ईयर most global institutions forecast that Pakistan will stay in a deadly cycle of low growth, high inflation. In news from Sri Lanka, 
Sri Lankan authorities have extended weekend curfew in the western province, including capital Colombo, till November 9, as the number of COVID-19 patients continue to rise. Sri Lanka's second wave of coronavirus has shown the highest number of cases in the island's western province. Following a surge in COVID-19 cases in the past few days, Sri Lankan authorities on Sunday said the ongoing weekend curfew in the western province, where capital Colombo is located, will be extended until November 9. Army Commander Lieutenant General Shavendra Silva, who heads the National Center for the Prevention of COVID-19, in a televised address Sunday afternoon said the curfew has been imposed to help prevent the spread. Months after effectively containing the pandemic in the initial months, Sri Lanka was caught unawares by a cluster that emerged and rapidly spread in a garment factory near Colombo early October. As of Monday, health authorities reported a total of 11,060 cases, 21 deaths and over 4,900 recoveries. The new cases have been attributed to two clusters, the garment factory and a fish market in Colombo. Meanwhile, Sri Lankan President Gotabaya Rajapaksha has made several concrete decisions to curb COVID-19 spread without disrupting public life and the economy. Moving on to news from Nepal. Coronavirus pandemic has taken charm off the upcoming festival of Flash Tihar for farmers in Nepal as floriculture business has been hit hard. Growers said this year the turnover is likely to fall by about 40% as the festivities will be limited due to restrictions. Coronavirus pandemic has taken charm of the upcoming festival of Tihar for farmers in Nepal's Bhaktapur, as floriculture business has been hit hard. Demand for marigold and gomfrena globosa flowers, which have a special place in annual Tihar festival, usually skyrockets in Nepali markets during this time. However, growers said this year the turnover is likely to fall by about 40% as festivities will be limited due to coronavirus restrictions. Some growers said they anticipated losses as the lockdown was in place and started cultivating maize, slashing the volume of flower cultivation. While florists have said that market factor has also remained hostile this time, as they have to sometimes sell flowers at lower prices. Nepal has so far reported 176,500 confirmed cases of coronavirus with 984 deaths so far. Ahead of the festive season in Northern Punjab state, an Indian animal welfare group is making environment-friendly idols of Hindu gods with cow dung. Cows are considered sacred in Hinduism, equivalent to God and are worshipped. Even from the environmental perspective, cow dung is known to be a fine organic manure for almost all kinds of plants without any side effects. An Indian animal welfare group is making environment-friendly idols of Hindu gods with cow dung ahead of the festive season in northern Punjab state. Gauri Shankar Seva Dal, the animal welfare group led by Ramesh Sharma, takes care of nearly 2,000 cows in Chandigarh and Mohali districts in various shelters. During the COVID-19 situation and its subsequent economic impact, the organization was not getting enough funds and donations. However, the organization is still not selling the idols and other items they make from the cow dung and all those who visit the shelter can just take it with them. दीपावली के पर्व पर हम लाखों की तादाद में सोचकर बैठे हैं बाकी प्रभु की इच्छा हम दिए भी जलाएंगे हिंदूस वर्शिप गॉडेस ऑफ वेल्थ लक्ष्मी ऑन दिवाली द फेस्टिवल ऑफ लाइट्स अलोंग विद अदर गॉड्स एंड गॉडेसेस द नेक्स्ट डे ऑफ दिवाली इज फॉर वर्शिपिंग ऑफ काउस 
Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash AsiaNewsline and follow us on Twitter at AsiaNewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Subscribe Tag TV YouTube channel and press the notification button. Subscribe Tag TV YouTube channel and press the notification button.